banners are up. Teams have just loaded in. Mask claims, how are you doing, bud? Toggle? What do you mean, toggle? You want to toggle my nipple or what? With your tongue, you dirty mofo. Might enjoy that too much. <laughs> right, so Rose are now attacking, Slav the defending. Obviously, Slavs technically have game point because their attack was pretty nicely executed. They won fairly handily. I think they had like 400 odd units at the end of it as well. So we'll see what Rose can do here. I'm sure they are more than willing to try and get the draw back. Both teams have got a lot of moles as well. The attackers have got four, defenders have got five. One long sword for the defenders, three short swords for the attackers and four for the defenders. Two, no, three pole axes for the attackers and only one for the defenders. I think that's a big thing because pole axe has been, without having that um, random uh, CC immunity every 30 seconds, uh, pole axe has been massively nerfed. Two nodachi as well for the attackers. One musket, a jewel blade. Like, I honestly don't think nodachi is that good. I mean, it definitely is against blue units, but it's not good against like tier 5 and tier 4. Especially not if you get, um, like, focused, like, what should be happening in this type of situation. But we'll see. Looks like both teams have got the same players as well, so nobody's been subbed out or anything. Oh, oh, multiple have just left, so we've had a disconnect. We have had it. Yeah, Ugly mug. At once. I don't know why every time I try leaving these custom battles, I have to leave like a couple of times. Kind of annoying, not to lie. Apologies for that. Obviously, no clue what happened, but we'll get a new lobby going in a second. And get going in. I assume somebody DC'd. This time, obviously, the reset will take nowhere near as long as it did the last time, because the password's the same. <laughs> For one, and we'll uh, we'll get going in. And again, the bands this time are Falcon and Stiffer off night was the same for the first match. Like from other divisions as well, there's been problems with people not loading and stuff. It's all good. There's rules for this sort of thing. It happened right at the beginning of the game, so no problems there. Right, let's go. Oh, we're missing one more play and then we're good to go, boys. So we've got some interesting fights tonight, man. Um, Kind of luckily for me, that uh, Zelgius and Marker G weren't able to stream tonight because I get to do the whole of the Feudal Division. <laughs> and um, like this match has been very good so far. We've obviously got the next one at 2000 hours. It's going to be Plebs versus No Beaches. At 2100 CEST, so my time's also CEST. You can see that in the top corner, not this corner. I can't see because I'm blocking my OBS. <laughs> I think it's that side. Um, Surf Slays versus Bloth Blockers should be pretty good. They've got actually Reapers and Cataphracts banned. Which is kind of strange. Plebs have actually banned Iron Reapers and Zakalian Militia as well. And Pon Guard against Blamey Lace is the last match of the evening. So that is Falconetis and Catfrax. It'll be very interesting to see how that works out. The game is populated now though. We are going in. I'm not going to do the, the intro again. Shout out to Coffee Fuel Gaming though for making that intro. I need to go to the head of it. So I've just seen my bloody... See my mop getting, getting very long. Especially with this heat as well, it needs to get, it needs to go, it needs to go. Look how long it is. Prepare for battle. Get in position! Right, hero class wise, it looks exactly the same as it just did. The exact same amount of moles, short swords, and all the rest of it. It's the same to me. Four against five moles. Three Polaxes. 
We had another disconnect because Turbo. Alright, no, yeah. I was going to say Turbo Turbo Castan hasn't uh, put a second unit in, but he has now. Right, so what have we got? So the attackers have got four sets of Outriders. If people don't know, you can use Outriders and Javelins to destroy the breaches. So I wouldn't be surprised to see those four instantly nuke in the B side breach. Although Bruder no face. See one of the guys. Oh no, so the four Outriders are spawned in A. They're going to get rid of the breach at A. Everyone else is going to go the B side. Or B gate at least. The attackers have got three sets of berserkers, four, five sets of berserkers up, so they're probably going to be patrolling the wall. They've also got three sets of Genjis, a couple of sets of Modal, Fort Brachio, IPGs, Palace Guards, and Imperial Shields. The attackers have also got a decent amount of anti cavalry. We'll see how this goes down. The defenders are mainly on A by the looks of it. Alright, let's see if we can get up into the air as quickly as possible because this match always starts quickly. Yeah. Right. They're going to do chop down the gate on the B side. A lot of these guys have seen that they're not there apparently and are already moving across. These four guys here are going to just javelin the, the breach basically, get that down as quick as possible. So when they do respawn over this side or however they're going to do it, they can go straight through. It looks like the big fight's actually going to be over on the B side though. Although, oh no, they just made it look like it to make them rotate. Okay. They're leaving their units at the resupply over there. They're going to run over at this supply, get new units and probably try and get straight through the B breach. Some of them are bringing units over now. They're going to break down the gate first, apparently. I won't be surprised if we see them run back over. Breach is down at 35% as well, so it's not quite ready to go through just yet. They definitely have four slabs to rotate back to A, though. Yeah, you can see all of the units in the background, they're retreating. So the defenders have no cavalry up. The attackers still have their four outriders, but they'll be getting swapped now as soon. Yeah, the, the breach is down, so they'll be swapped now. So the attackers have just run through the gate and gone straight up onto the walls to get rid of the unit, uh, the heroes that are up there. They're going to have to be careful with these berserkers, though. There's five sets of them running around. If they get caught out and the berserkers uh, start doing damage on stuff, they're going to be in a world of hurt. So a lot of the attackers are just diving in without any units. I think maybe just try and see where their specialist units are. Maybe get a decent blob of the units and get a treb off. Or just get rid of some of the Shenjis and stuff. Somebody's on A. They're not going to, be able to actually get a cap off there though. So there's Shenjis back here now. They were like two or three sets of Shenjis though. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes down. So Rose not wasting any units. But definitely, let's say, throwing away hero lives. I don't know if they got many of the specialist units back here dead though. They got a couple. Tried getting in a decent position to get a treb down though. Still Slavs patrolling the walls with Berserkers. Still everyone from Rose on the A side. They at least lost seven heroes there and the defenders didn't lose any. Oh wait, that's pretty decent um, advantage already for the attackers. They only lost seven units as well, so whatever Rose tried there, it didn't quite work out. I definitely didn't see that many Shen die there. How are they going to do with this then? They seem to be very hesitant. They've got five minutes still. B-side gates down. Hi, Babalu. How are you doing, bud? Three minute delay, so apologies if I don't reply. Right, so the, the push is coming in now. Looks like they're going to get wall presence. Maybe get rid of these berserkers first. They can't build artillery, so taking the wall isn't that of much of a priority. They do have shields over this side as well. The berserkers will not be able to get through that. The attackers do now have a unit, one unit of Shenjis. Up. No, two units of Shenjis. Sorry, they've got Reapers, two shields. Grey hair as well. A couple of Madao. It'll be interesting to see how they do this. Obviously, these Shenjis can throw straight over that building over there, and I think that's maybe what they try to get an angle on now. Because you see General Combo up on the side here, I think he's trying to get a decent... General Combo does have Shenjis as well, so he's going to get a bomb off now into this lot here. Rose pushing through the breach now. Looks like they're just... That bomb, though, getting rid of the shields. They're doing a counter push, look. Blabs are really aggressive. I'm enjoying this. That Treb's going to get a decent amount of work done. Yeah, landed straight on top of them. There's a fight going on on this side as well. There's nothing over at the B side. 
This Slav counter push though is doing really well. They've just been stopped by an F1 formation Fort Brachia though with more Dows on top of them. Obviously with heroes jumping in, belly flopping and all the rest of it, they're going to do a lot of work. There. These Javs should be getting kills though. Shenjin's up on the top though, should be doing work as well. You can see the Short Sword here jumping up to try and get some working on these Shenjis I would have thought. I think he's going to jump around and jump on top of them now. That unit's probably all going to be gone unless they notice it in time. The attackers have got A. Rose has done very well there. Slab's dropped down to eight heroes for one second there. Short Sword in the back is definitely going to be able to get rid of... Oh no, he died. He got rid of a good third of the unit though. Short Sword obviously doesn't have that much damage. There was a Jewel Blade in the back here a second ago though. Here he is. So he's on point to slow them down. There we go. They're going to try getting rid of him. I think he's just he's delaying. They've got three minutes. As soon as that short, uh, short sword, dual blade sword, he gets uh, knocked off, he's going to be in trouble. So we've got cataphracts coming from the B side for slabs. And there's cataphracts coming from the respawn as well. I don't know if they're actually going to go through though. They'll definitely get through the Madao. There were shields there a second ago, but the shields have been put to face the bridge because that's where the majority of the enemies are. They should be trebbing this. Where's the treb? Ah, oh, they couldn't. They couldn't. They can treb in a sec though, so they should just treb their units here. Because that is going to get through. They should just treb right here. There we go. That should be enough. Ooh. Let's have a look. This treb should be absolutely glorious. Obviously, how unlucky have they been there, man? But like two or three hit the side here. Javelins in the back there. The defenders have dropped down to seven heroes. The attackers are still on 12. Unit-wise, though, the defenders still have a lot of her uh, heroes. They still have a lot of units around. The attackers still have got a Modao on the bridge here, just making sure they can't get flanked. They should probably have pulled that back because they have the musket shizzy in the back that was putting pressure on on B. Hoya's still got his cataphracts, though, so maybe it's a good decision to keep them there. Still only seven heroes for the defenders. The attackers have just dropped a good handful, so now it's nine against five. There are only two minutes left of the game, though, if they can't get the B cap off. Turbo, Castan, and Avavik. Av General combos up on the wall here as well, just bombing everything. He's basically safe up there, um, at least from, from melee units. So there's Madao on the point. That Rebs. Maybe not going to be the best use, I don't know. A lot of attackers over on this supply over here. They should really be getting B off, really. The heroes on the A side have basically all died. The defenders got enough defense in that they're not going to lose A anymore, so the attackers need to get B. Unit-wise, the defenders have lost more, but they've still got more units left, which means they've got more trash. So if Rose can get through this bit here and get the B cap off, they just need to get rid of that one short sword and this mall coming over here now. They're not going to be able to get A. They've got a minute left. I very much doubt they can get A. They only need a couple of seconds on it, but there is a lot of units here. Then I can't see them getting A. B that they need. They've got, they need three guys on B to get the fastest cap off. They need to block this dual blade from getting through if they can. Yeah, he's just jumped off his horse. He's going to run straight through probably. He's on a short sword here. Just went invisible again, and he stopped the B cap. Now, is, are they going to be able to stop him? Now the short sword's on there as well. I think slabs have done it. Rose are uh, taking control of the A side. Okay, they might actually get A then instead, because there's a short sword still alive on B. There is a lot there to kill him, though. I'm going to do a wide view so we can see what's going on. Two heroes from the defenders on A. 20 seconds left, man. This is so goddamn close. Pike's just managed to get in on point. He's been thrown off, but then now there's enemy cavalry there. Oh, they're capping B. They've just got B and they got A basically simultaneously. Very, very close. Rose still have the unit advantage, only 20 though. But the units that the defenders have, they've got a lot of grey units. So they've got a lot of tier 1. Maybe got one decent, if you like, one decent set of unit and then they're on trash. Um, Pending C is never really a good idea. So it looks like they're going to go for a full setup on the home point. I'm going to have a quick look at the hero disparity quick. It looks like Chunk's maybe going to jump on B. Alright, no, he's turned around. Right, so 41... Death for the defenders and 23 deaths for the attackers. So Rose have got a huge advantage on this. I said this a few times. If you can get past A or B, it's basically GG. So it looks like they're not even going to bother with the docks, which is interesting. Right, let's see what the attackers have got. So they've got two sets of alchemists, which obviously don't really fight. They've got Free tier one. It's GG. Like, it's GG. I can't see Slav's been able to do all against this. They've got six trebs to contest against. They've got a full tier four stack. 
one more DAO and then, what, four or five sets of uh, Outriders? They're, they're not going to be able to stop this. One IPG walk and one more DAO is not going to be able to stop that amount of uh, that amount of cavalry and units that are going to come in. And all's, all's Rose has to do is... Right, I want to check this because they capped C first and now they're getting the Berserkers. I want to see what happens. They run up. If they just go and sit on C or if they actually go to the base point. I'm pretty sure it is. If you cap C first and then cap this, they just go and sit on C and don't actually do anything. And it looks like they're going towards C. So... We'll see in a second though, I'll have a quick look. So first Treb's coming in. Rose obviously got five minutes, they've got time. Um, they should be able to see the units that they're against. There's a Reaper and a Madao up now with an IPG and a Palace Guard. So there are four decent units on the field. Um, they are aiming at the best units in the back corner here, but it's a difficult position to actually land the Treb on. The Alchemists are now healing that blob. So whatever damage may or may not have been done, nothing happened. And this kids is why claim the dock first and then you claim C, because now these Berserkers just sit on C and don't get involved at all. Right, so Rose are starting their push, they just trebbed the point, no one was there anyway, but it was probably just to deny that area to the defenders. Iron Reapers and Palace Guards come in, in here, along with an IPG walk. Modao are in the mix as well, but there's so many units for the attackers coming in. They've got so many uh, Outriders here as well, throwing their explosive javelins in. Like these heroes here trying to jump in the back aren't really going to do that much. These Fort Brachio should really be getting pushed on V attack. Most of the units for the defenders are already down. That was a terrible trip. It just hit their own units pretty much. Um, and now they can just push two on their Outriders and completely clear everything out. They should probably send an Outrider or two up here as well. Then Mattels are not going to get anywhere near, near it though. That's GG. Very close though. If Slavs have been it hold out, what, that nine seconds longer on AMB? That would have been GG, but... Having a hero or a unit advantage and a hero advantage on the base point is always bad. Even having the same amount of units, it's, it's this this whole point is so trebable. It's it's very difficult to defend. Even if it looks like you've got the advantage in units and stuff, it's just the attackers have the advantage there. You can turn it how you want. It's just a fact. So Dios Profugo, no Dachi player with the MVP, seven one and sixteen on the hero front, from twenty seven unit kills, very nicely done. Second was Shizzy. He was a lot of the time in the background. I didn't manage to, to focus on him that much. I know he's been an absolute pain on the B side, though, when the main fight was on A. Seen him a couple of times popping up. Very nicely done from those two players as well. Berserker mode, 161 units killed. Very nicely done. 20 assists as well. And general combo with the MVP first. Wow. Very nicely done. He, he did work with his changes at the beginning there. And he was in a little sneaky position up on the side of that building. Or like a fence, if you like, next to A. So GG. GG to both teams. It was a draw. Um, let's have a look at the stats here then. So the attackers definitely lost the first push. We've definitely seen that. And then from then on, it was all going in Rose's favour.